Okay, so we're uh, going to continue now. Uh, I think this would be the last video on the photoelectric effect. So in the previous video, I explained really how Einstein um, came up with this uh, idea that in the case of the photoelectric effect, light, which all this time up to that point had been shown to behave like a wave and you know people have developed wave equations for to to basically model how light behaves and those equations worked out all just fine until this time light turns out to also have particle like behavior and according to Einstein that's the only way you can uh, explain how light behaves uh, and fit the experimental data of the photoelectric effect if you assume that light in this case is behaving like a uh, particle and so I want to kind of put up uh, in this uh, quote here exactly what Einstein said about the photoelectric effect um, so he said that according to the assumption that we were making here so he's assuming in this case that when light is coming out uh, from a point the energy is not distributed continuously over ever increasing spaces so that's really talking about light as a wave so if you think about a wave like a, a water wave for example if you drop a stone in the middle of a lake the water wave would just kind of spread from that one point where the stone is dropped right the wave just kind of spreads over 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 an incre uh, ever increasing spaces right the wave just keeps spreading and spreading and spreading and so he's saying that in this particular experiment you can't think of the light as a wave but that the light should be imagined or assumed to consist of a finite number of energy quanta okay so what that means is that light should be con con you know con considered to con consist of a bunch of discrete energy packets okay which is what we call a photon now and they are localized in points in space so they're like particles basically right if something is localized in points in space that's basically a particle they move without dividing so it's a unit that's moving has an energy just like a particle a particle has a mass has a velocity so it has energy and can be absorbed or generated only as a whole this is important too meaning that when the photon hits an electron the energy of the photon can either be taken in all of it or none of it you can't uh, take half of that energy or two-thirds of that energy you either take the whole energy of the photon or you take zero you take none okay so that's the way he modeled light in the concept context of the photoelectric effect so as I mentioned before everybody who worked on these these fields got the Nobel Prize and in fact Einstein of course everybody knows about Einstein and you know how smart he was and you know the, and, and usually you associate Einstein with the theory of relativity but really the Nobel Prize that Einstein won uh, was given for his explanation of the photoelectric effect not for his theory of relativity and this you know hopefully should convince you that this is a really important um, change in the way of the people view light okay as I said before light was always model as a wave and it's not until this point that people thought about light as in certain cases uh, to be like a particle just a collection of particles and that's where you have to kind of start to change your opinion about how things actually work okay so I like to put this uh, particular uh, uh, slide up because this this book Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde there's a movie of it, of it. Uh, hopefully everybody was, was uh, is either has seen this before either had had read the book usually it's a required reading for um, you know elementary school or maybe middle school um, this was a story written you know around the, the time uh, I believe around the 1800s or so talking about the fact that you know every everybody always always has two personalities really and this was uh, actually written in the way that there's a person who's good uh, called Dr. Jekyll but he wanted to do a bunch of bad things so he invented a, a, a basically a potion that he could take and that would turn him into this monster called Mr. Hyde and he was able to go out and start doing bad things as that monster but then if he takes that um, potion again he turns back into uh, Dr. Jekyll and so this I, I like to mention this in the context of the wave particle duality of light because light all this time we thought of light as this wave 
uh, base phenomenon, right? You know, we have this Maxwell equations and that's perfectly fine. You, you can pretty much explain everything that you want to do with light with those Maxwell equations. That why, that's why they're so powerful and you still, you know, if you take a physics class now, you're still learning about them. But it turns out that in certain contexts, it makes no sense to think about light as, as waves because if you do that, you, you basically can't predict anything about the behavior of light. So in the context of the um, photoelectric effect experiments, for example, you have to imagine light as a particle. So this is often called the wave-particle duality of light. In other words, light can behave as waves. It can also behave like particles. So that's where the connection is with this Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, which is the same person could behave two different ways depending on the context, okay? Now, I want to uh, summarize this in terms of the equation of the photoelectric effect. So basically what Einstein did was he uh, came up with this equation, kinetic energy of the electron is equal to h nu. Remember, h nu is the energy of the incoming uh, photon of light, right? And then subtract from that the energy of the uh, Ener the electrostatic energy that's holding the electron to the nucleus. If you take the difference between these two numbers, the energy that's left over should be the, en the kinetic energy of the electron after it, it, it escapes the, um, the pull of the nucleus. Okay. Now, here's a description of each of these terms. Kinetic energy of the electron, of course, is half mv squared. Mass, in this case, mass of electron. V is velocity of electron. Uh, h nu, uh, this term here, is the energy of the incoming photon of light. Now, you can express this, you'll see this in, a, in an example that we're going to um, do in a second. You can express this per photon, energy per photon, or energy per mole of photons, okay? So if you express it per photon, then it's very small. Express it per mole of photon, then it's a bigger and more measurable number. H nu naught, remember that's called the threshold energy because the nu naught itself is called the threshold frequency. You can think of this as the energy that's the minimum energy you need to eject the electron, right? But remember, that's also the energy that's holding the electron to the atom. So when an electron is being uh, stripped off the atom, we call that term ionization. We say that the electron or the atom has been ionized. Remember, ions are charged particles. They have either lost or gained electrons. In this case, they have lost, elect uh, they have lost electrons, right? So electrons have been taken out from the atom. So this quantity here, h uh, nu naught, is often also referred to as the first ionization energy, which is how much energy does it take to take out an electron from an atom? And again, that depends on the um, uh, type of atom that you're working with. And this is something you'll see again later in this topic uh, when we talk about the periodic uh, trend of you know, uh, properties. So it's really important to remember this term ionization energy, first ionization energy. Um, but that's what that h nu naught is. Uh, another term for this quantity h nu naught is the work function, which has a symbol phi. So a lot of times you'll see this equation written as Ke of electron equals h nu minus phi. Okay, phi or work function is basically it's it's basically this term h nu naught. It's the reason it's called a work function is because in order to take that electron off from the surface of the metal, you need to do work, work in a thermodynamic sense, right? Meaning that you need to apply force, uh, you know, over that particular area to get that energy, to get that uh, uh, electron off the surface of the metal. So that's why it's often called a work function as well. Okay, so I'm going to just finish the video here. When we come back, I'll do an example and that will be our last video.